Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. Today, we were hoping to take you on a bit of a bread journey. You'll see here my sourdough starter, and this sourdough starter comes with a story. 12 years ago, I wanted to learn how to make my own bread. My Aunt Vicky, who happened to be my neighbor at the time, came over one day after she was done with work and just spent an hour and a half in my kitchen with me showing me how she made bread. Now this was a very basic sandwich bread that I learned how to make. It was white flour, white sugar, and canola oil. Now fast forward 12 years and I'm making more bread than ever, but our bread looks quite a bit different than it did in those days. I started making sourdough bread about 10 years ago but didn't really get good at it until about five years ago. One of the biggest factors in learning how to bake bread better was people taking the time to teach me and sort of walk alongside me because sourdough bread is certainly not something that you perfect overnight. Now my friend Carla, who began Jovial Foods decades ago, shared with me a piece of her starter that she started about 30 years ago in Italy. And I've been baking with that sourdough starter ever since then. This is a really special piece of my kitchen and one that I'm very, very grateful to have. My friends, I'm so excited to introduce you to Bona Fortuna Italian Goods today. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. There's a special link for you to shop with below. I came back from Sicily hungry for their food and that's when I discovered Bona Fortuna products. The farm is nestled among the Sicilian mountains and it's managed to be intertwined with the natural biodiversity and local wild flora and fauna. They've taken great strides to protecting and revitalizing olive tree varieties that are native to the area. And now because of their work, there are over 2000 BC trees thriving on the farm. All the olive oil is cold pressed right on the farm to ensure the highest quality. Bona Fortuna was built with a desire of preserving heritage, and as they've grown, that continues to be the mission. So whether that's celebrating Sicilian pasta, made from heirloom grains, or harvesting wild fennel, Bona Fortuna believes in producing high quality, traditional Italian cuisine products using the best raw ingredients available. I've got a special link for you to shop below. This week's been one of those weeks where we needed to slow down a little bit and put our hand to something a bit more intentional that required us to shift into a lower gear. Yeah, it might seem weird actually. When we have a hard time or a particularly challenging season of life, I actually find those are the seasons where I want to bake bread more. That might kind of seem counterintuitive because we've been teaching people now to bake their own breads for a long time. And often what we hear is, well, isn't that work? Isn't that a lot of work? And yet somehow in the economy of the home, when we stop and we slow down and we intentionally make bread like we did so many times this week, so many different ways, you end up fuller for the effort. Homemade bread has a mystique to it. What do you think it is about putting your hand to something like this and producing your own homemade loaf of bread? that is so rewarding. You know, it's funny because as much as I like things to be orderly, um, we chose the wrong hobbies <laughs> because gardening, homesteading, homeschooling, bread baking, these are all tasks that sort of force you to be a student for life. So you never perfect it. You never are at a place where you can't learn something more. And I think that's part of the mystique for me is every time it feels a little bit like a personal challenge. Can I listen to the bread? Can I learn the flour? Can I learn the season or the, the temperature or the humidity? All these things that affect ultimately how your bread turns out. Every time it feels like, um, like a little bit of a puzzle, a mind puzzle. And I enjoy that mystique. I'll never be its master. Like I said, this week has been a little more crazy than normal. And so I think part of the draw of something like baking bread yourself 
is that it forces you to get back to something elemental and principle, something very basic. The result of which, though, is anything but basic. It's all the things that you love, nourishment and pride in making something, something you get to share with the people you care about, and uh, the sense of accomplishment, I suppose, as well. Uh, But it all stems from this very ancient, basic, elemental thing. There's a really great Russian proverb that says, with a piece of bread in your hand, you'll find paradise under a pine tree. And I find that to be very true here. There are these little pockets. When you have a piece of bread, it's that much better. So after the chaos of this week, I kind of found myself inside swirling and struggling with knowing what to do with myself. And Stuart suggested that we just spend the afternoon outside cooking together, a time of just kind of putting in extra effort and taking a step back, coming together, and just enjoying the moment. Just like baking bread, cooking outside is the kind of thing where you have to drop everything else pretty much and give it your attention. We have an orcharding friend who orchards uh, pears. And as you can imagine, there's any number of things to give your attention to when you run an orchard. But an interesting thing he told me is that when a pipe bursts or something that's an emergency happens, it almost focuses his attention in a way that nothing else does because you know that's what you have to focus on that moment. And I feel like something like cooking outside a leg of lamb for three hours and tending to the fire is the kind of thing that just demands that you give it your attention. And so everything else magically recedes into the background. Of course, it's still there (laughs) when you're done, but I find sometimes you have maybe a renewed perspective or even energy to give your attention to those things. So my contribution to supper tonight while Stuart tends to the lamb was fireside flatbreads. I'm gonna be dousing these in olive oil and sprinkling herbs over the top. It's a really easy recipe and I'll be sure to tag it below. You'll notice that I primarily bake with einkorn flour. That's what I feed my sourdough starter. That's what I made the brioche out of. That's what I'm making these flatbreads out of. This is a really low gluten flour. The gluten is really weak. So people who often can't tolerate high gluten breads or even average breads can tolerate einkorn flour. It's soft and it's a little tricky to work with because of this weak gluten. So if you'd like to learn more about baking with einkorn, I'm going to be hosting an einkorn baking workshop the Friday after next. I'll be sure to tag the workshop details below the video. You can also view different workshops that we offer such as einkorn and semolina pasta workshops and more. So there is this funny thing about bread that happens too. As I was making these flatbreads, I sort of felt the stress of the week melt away. And I texted my friend Dolores and I said, have you ever noticed that when you try to make bread angry, it doesn't work, the bread won't turn out. It's as if somehow the bread soaks up your energy and it can tell So I often find that when I'm making bread, I actually have to take a few deep breaths and just say, okay, this is what we're doing now. This is soft and relaxing and nourishing and good, but it feels very personal, very nuanced. And really it is because bread is affected by the temperature of your home, 
It's affected by the microbes of your home and the microbes on your hands. It's affected by the season. So bread, it is really cyclical with the seasons, just like everything else. I suppose that's a good reminder to show some appreciation for the changing of the seasons. It's really easy to, especially this time of year, to kind of get caught in uh, the desire for things to, to shift to the next season a little more quickly because our winter season tends to drag a bit. But really, it's a reminder that there's really nothing you can do about that. So take the time to discipline your mind to appreciate the things that are in front of you. After a day on the counter, my starter is ready for the next loaf. You'll notice that my sourdough starter looks quite a bit different than most. I keep what I call a dry sourdough starter. We've done a video on this that I'll be sure to tag below as well. Basically, this means that I only feed my sourdough starter once a week and I never have any discard. So when I want to bake a loaf of bread, I simply grab a piece of my sourdough starter, whether it's been freshly fed or whether it's in the refrigerator, and I mix it with warm water and flour and leave it for a few hours to activate it. Once you do this, it looks just like a typical sourdough starter and you can use it just like you would in any recipe. How many people do you think this little piece of starter has gone out to, if you were to guess. We ship a piece of this sourdough starter out to all new cooking community members, and we also send a piece out to all workshop participants. So I think just from our teeny tiny little corner of the world, we've probably spread it to hundreds, if not thousands of people throughout the world. It's pretty incredible. Normally I bake my everyday sourdough bread with all-purpose einkorn flour and some variety of a whole wheat flour. Sometimes this is freshly ground einkorn. Today it's some freshly ground wheat from our friends' farm. We gave them some honey a few months ago and they returned the jar full of their little wheat berries, which is so fun. So I'm gonna be using some of that wheat flour in my einkorn loaf today. One of the things that I find really intoxicating about bread is that it does also force you to stay at home. There's a lot more wiggle room with sourdough than people give it. It is nuanced. It's not hard and fast. So it's really difficult to give people specific instructions, such as let this rise for 94 minutes or it's just more nuanced than that. So it really involves a wisdom of looking at it and knowing what it should feel like and knowing what it should smell like. But there is a piece of it because it does take hours from start to finish, even though most of it is hands off. There's just this piece of it that keeps you grounded at home, which in turn forces your life to kind of take on a more simple note. kind of uh, zoom out on a broader perspective. We're talking about bread here. We're also talking about something that's more broadly applicable, which is approaching life a certain way and having certain kinds of priorities. And especially in a day where so many things require our attention, especially attention away from our homes and our families. Something like baking bread can be a small way to bring your attention back to the things that ought to matter the most.
So what you see me doing here now is stretching and folding my loaf. The flour is much stickier than your average flour and it's much weaker than your average flour. So I do this process to kind of strengthen the gluten a little bit so that the bread can hold its shape. I just fold the bread over itself every 15 minutes a few times before I let it rise for roughly five to six hours this time of year. Now, if you get into bread making, you're going to see really extraordinary artisan loaves all over your Instagram feed. And you're gonna search pictures and you're gonna maybe beat yourself up a little bit because your homemade loaves might not look like that, especially if you're baking with einkorn or any whole grain. The breads that you see that get the fantastic pop of the ear is what it's called or the kind that have really incredible designs cut into them. Those are all wonderful. But this is a flour that we've chosen for its flavor and for its digestibility. And it's not going to give you that same sort of showmanship loaf that one might expect or that one could maybe think that they should be creating in their kitchen. I think of uh, einkorn and breads like it kind of as underdogs of the bread world, and uh, I tend to always root for the underdog. James Beard said that good bread is the most fundamentally satisfying of all foods, and good bread with fresh butter, the greatest of feasts. And I feel that that's so true in our home. When it's a day of fresh bread, when you get to wake up and there's a loaf sitting on the counter, that's a good day. Oh, beyond.